hello, 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 my name's Joe. I'm talking to you from the construction site of our new track. You're about to watch the full modified diecast racing tournament at Corkscrew Laguna. The first half is presented by our old presenters, who got fired for stealing parts from cars to sell on the black market. The second half, you've been blessed with me, Tom and Ruby. What up guys, it's Tom. Watch until the end, because not only will we be giving out some awards in unseen footage, we will be shining the light on a huge error we made. Make sure you like and subscribe, viewers. Our first racer is Strike, driving for Essex Boys Racing. This 67 Austin minivan rocking a British flag livery weighs 64 grams. Next up is Puff, driving for Puffs Racing. Puff is driving an Audi RS6 Avant weighing 70 grams. Not sure those tinted windows are legal. Nothing about these races is illegal. Our third racer is Beefus driving for Hardcore Poetic Racing in a 69 Mercury Cougar weighing 52 grams. What a ride. Last up we have Rex driving for Raptors Racing in this green Corvette C7 weighing 60 grams. These modified cars weigh roughly double the weight of the stock cars from the last tournament. The extra speed could be interesting. Does that mean if I put on a load of weight I could beat you in a downhill race on foot? Probably if you rolled. Puff starts in front in the white Audi alongside Strike in the minivan. Beefus takes back in the yellow Cougar alongside Rex in the green Corvette. Puff is in the lead. Beefus Beefus is blocking Rex's overtake attempt. Beefus passes strike, taking second place. Oh no, he's lost control on the corner. Puff has a nice lead approach in the finish line and Puff takes first place. Strike second, Rex third, Beefus last after that unfortunate 360 on the apple store turn, but kudos to him for recovering and still managing to finish. Puff maintained a comfortable lead throughout race one, although Beefus was closing the gap and could have posed a threat if he hadn't lost control on the turn. Three races to go, but Puffs Racing is currently leading with five points. Essex Boys Racing second with three points. It's still any man's race. I don't think you're allowed to say that anymore. Race two. I wonder if Puff tinted his windows because he's actually puffing in there. Well, just to confirm for our family viewers at home, Johnny's referring to breathing fast. Beefus is feeling brave, challenging on the first turn. What a drift from Rex. Beefus slips past Strike into first place. Let's see if Rex can hold his place. Half overtake Strike, pushing him into last. Looks like this could be a comfortable win for Rex. Oh, we spun out a bit there. Rex takes first place, Beefus second, Puff third. We seem to have lost Strike. It's a DNF. Looks like these tyres weren't made for drifting. Hang on, is he still moving? He's actually still moving down the track. Could he still claim that fourth place point? Nope, looks like that's it. Let's watch the replay back and see what happened. Great performance from Rex, Beefus and Puff managed overtakes. Unfortunately, the camera didn't pick up what happened with Strike, but as he was at the back, we can only assume he drifted out and there was too much friction on the tyres. Yes, what a shame for Essex Boys Racing, who managed to fight off the competition for second place in the first race. This now leaves them at the bottom of the leaderboard. It's time for race three. Puff and Rex are in joint first place, but Beefus taking his turns in the front two lanes could just shake things up. All this talk of beef is making me hungry. Let's go to the Golden Arches after work. I'm in. Puff has overtaken Rex and Beefus is in first place, but Rex is still hot on Puff's tail. He could just get past there. Beefus collided with the wall, but it looks like he's recovered. And Beefus takes first place. Second place goes to Puff and third place to Rex. Looks like Strike has gone on Strike. It's another DNF. He couldn't make it through the apple corner. He's come to a complete stop. Is this guy stealing trees? Looks like it. Let's check out that scoreboard before the final race. Puff from Puff's Racing just about has first place with 10 points. Beefus of Hardcore Poetic Racing and Rex of Raptors Racing are in joint second with 9 points. And Strike from Essex Boys Racing has a disappointing 3 points after 2 DNFs. Let's go to the final race. Puff is back in the first row. If he comes anywhere but last, he's guaranteed a place in round 2. Can Rex get ahead of Beefus is the big question. Tight pack on the first turn. Beefus pushes out in front of Puff. Puff isn't giving up easily. He's coming right up behind Beefus and appearing to try and spin him out. Whoa, Puff has taken the lead and Rex mounts the side of the track to get past. He's hungry for that win. Puff takes first, Rex second. Beefus reverses through in third and Strike, unfortunately, did not have enough speed to make the finish. That was an eventful final race with some fierce competition and plenty of overtakes, but it was Rex that stole the show at the end with that superb pass. Unfortunately, the minivan does not seem to like this track and couldn't quite get the speed needed to cope with the deadly Corkscrew Laguna 4180 bank turns between short straights. It's time to look at the final scoreboard, but don't rush off as we will also be revealing who has the fastest lap time, the most overtakes, best appearance and star moment. We also have a special request for modified car builders. 
Leaving the tournament in last place, it's Stripe Racing for Essex Boys Racing with three points after three DNFs. Leaving in third place, it's Beefus driving for Hardcore Poetic Racing. Excellent performance, missing out on second place by a small margin. This is not the last we've heard from Essex Boys Racing or Hardcore Poetic Racing as both teams have another car in the tournament. In second place, going through to the second round after a stunning overtake in the last race is Rex driving for Raptors Racing with 12 points. And in first place with 15 points, it's Puff driving for Puffs Racing, bagging two race wins in this group. Well done, Puff. Welcome back to XR Diecast Racing. We're at Cork Drew Laguna today to see Group 2 race in our opening round. Essex Boys Racing, Puffs Racing and Hardcore Poetic Racing are back and joined by Milestone Racing. The two lowest scoring drivers will be eliminated today and will also be playing host to a Fast and Furious obstacle race later on as a small taster of a new format we're working on. Make sure you subscribe to XR Diecast Racing and follow us on social media so you don't miss behind the scenes action. Let's meet our drivers. Driving for Milestone Racing today, it's Dusty Miles in a Green Karma GS6 weighing 73 grams. Essex Boys Racing are back with Dave driving an 88 Ford Thunderbird weighing 48 grams. Next up, it's Misty G driving for Puffs Racing in an 84 Mustang SVO weighing 71 grams. Let's see if the Mustang can match the performance of Puff Racing's Audi in Group 1. Last but not least, Hardcore Poetic Racing are back with Iron Poet driving a Chrysler 300C Hemi weighing 62 grams. Race 1, Misty G on the left alongside Iron Poet take the front and Dave in the back on the left next to Dusty Miles. Misty G is attempting to block Iron Poet, but this could be about to backfire as Misty G is now reversing towards the Apple Store. Dusty Miles is hot on the tail of Iron Poet, but doesn't quite have the speed to get past. Hang on, Misty G takes first place. That was so close. I think we better watch that again in slow motion. Yep, Misty G's wheels just about touched over the finish line before Iron Poet. Eventful start to the race, Dusty Miles came close to overtakes a couple of times but couldn't get past and Misty G stole first place in the last couple of seconds. Race 2, Dave and Misty G take the front and Dusty Miles with Iron Poet at the back. Dusty Miles makes an early challenge on Misty G in the first turn and Misty G moves to block him. Some might call that dirty, but I'd call it tactful. Dave has maintained first place this race, but Misty G is hot on his tail and is now overtaken and stolen the win. That's got to be painful for Essex Boys Racing. Great performance from Dave and Misty G in that race. Dave held on to first place for most of the race until Misty G overtook him on the last turn. Shame we didn't pick that up on camera. Missy G is currently way ahead in first place with 10 points and all other racers are in joint second with 4 points each. Four Seasons Rally Tournaments coming late summer. Teams will build cars to withstand obstacles much worse than this on our upcoming track. Secure a place now by submitting test cars. Toretto in his Dodge Charger takes on Brian in his Toyota Supra. Let's go! Approaching the first obstacles now, which is a pile of tyres on the second bend. Here we go, and Toretto smashes through, as does Brian, and here we go, the barrels. Oh, you can see that slowed them right down on this corner here. And through the cones, no problems there. Into the finish line. Toretto takes the win in lap one. 8.5 second lap is the slowest by far that we've ever recorded on this track. So you can see how the obstacles really slow the cars down. We've only really got a few on this test concept. Back through the tyres again. Through the barrels. Oh, looks awesome. Barrels following the cars the whole way around the track. And back through the cones. And Brian takes the win this time. Back to the tournament, it's Dusty Miles racing an old rival, Dave in the front, and Iron Poet racing Misty G in the back. Let's break that second place tie. Dusty Miles pushes out in front, and Essex Boys Racing are in second place. Misty G has overtaken Iron Poet, now hot on Dave's tail. Dusty Miles first, Dave second, Misty G third, and Iron Poet last. Dave fought off an early challenge from Iron Poet and Misty G later in the race, but couldn't quite get the speed to slip past Dusty Miles. Let's see where that leaves us on the scoreboard. 
Iron Poet is currently in last place with five points, Dave in third place with seven points, Dusty Miles in second place with nine points, and Misty G in first place with 12 points. It's the final race, Iron Poet and Dusty Miles take the front, Misty G and Dave in the back. Iron Poet in first place, Misty G has spun out again on that corner and reversing back round. Oh. Dave has overtaken, is now in second place. Iron Poet takes first place. Dave in second, Missy G third, and Dusty Miles last. Great last race. Dave managed to go from fourth place into second place after Missy G spun out on that corner and almost came off the track if anyone saw that at the back. Iron Poet taking first place could just shake up that scoreboard. Let's find out. As you can see, Misty G has 14 points and will be going through in first place to the next round, but the rest of the races are currently all drawn in second place with 10 points. We're now going to go to a time trial race and whoever has the quickest lap will go through to the next round. First up, Dave from Essex Boys Racing. Six point one three nine seconds for Dave. Next up is Dusty Miles from Milestone Racing. The time to be is six point one three nine seconds. That's five point five three seven seconds for Dusty Miles. Last up, it's the Iron Poet from Hardcore Poetic Racing. The time to beat is 5.537 seconds. That's 5.644 seconds for Iron Poet. That means Dusty Miles takes second place in Group 2. Thank you for watching XR Diecast Racing. Congratulations to Misty G and Dusty Miles who will be going through to round two. But great effort from Dave and Iron Poet. This has been an incredibly close race. Unfortunately, Essex Boys Racing and Hardcore Poetic Racing have now been eliminated from the tournament. Thank you both for racing on Corkscrew Laguna. Both teams have signed up to submit test cars for our new track and racing format, so this is certainly not the last we have heard from them. Welcome back to XR Diecast Racing. We've got some real heavy hitters in Group 3 and a whole lot of action. Let's just say our studio is in hot water with the local law enforcement. Corkscrew Laguna is hosting more famous racing teams today. Let's check out the lineup. Driving for Numskull Racing, we have Numskull in a bright red Audi RS e-tron GT. Outstanding artwork, outstanding paint job. Representing Dog Squad Racing, we have Alex Blaze behind the wheel of a Honda Civic Type R weighing 70 grams. A lot of blacked out windows today. Next up is Terry Dactyl driving for Raptors Racing. Terry is shaking things up in a Baja Bison weighing 66 grams. What a beast. Driving for Chase Family Racing, we have End Count driving a Mercedes 500 SEC weighing 74 grams. Can't wait to sniff the fumes coming off that. Race one, end count and Terry Dacto in the green, kick things off in the front, Numsco in the red, Audi at the back, alongside Alex Blaze. Numsco overtakes Terry. That's got to be one of the earliest overtakes we've had. Terry is picking up the speed now, he's right behind Numsco and Numsco has pushed end count out of the way. End count goes 180 into reverse and he takes the win, Numsco second, Alex Blaze third and Terry Dacto last. That's got to be the most eventful first race we've had this tournament. Yeah, Numsco made a very early overtake into second place and was Hot on the tail of end count throughout the race, but couldn't quite find the room to get past. I've got to say, Terry's Baja Bison is a lot quicker than I expected. Very close to end count numbskull throughout that race. We also just missed at the end there. Alex Blaze overtook Terry, taking third place. In race two, Numskull and end count are headed for another high-speed encounter in the front row. Alex Blaze and Terry take the back. That Bison's pretty intimidating, isn't it? And we're off. Numskull moves to block end count. Dangerous before that turn. End count seems to be looking for a shortcut. Oh, Terry has pushed him off the edge of the trap. I really hope he survived that. Numskull approaching the finish line takes first place and Alex Blaze second. 
We better check on Terry and Encount. Encount dropped over a hundred feet, but I'm getting word that the car is completely fine. I guess Mercedes built more robust cars in the 80s. What about the driver? He's fine. Maybe he was made in the 80s too. Let's watch that replay. So he kind of veered off the track before he entered the turn and then Terry definitely gave him a helping push off the edge. Well, Terry got a taste of karma after his bison broke down. I hate to bring this up again, but this is like when Woody pushed Buzz out the window. It's got that kind of vibe, hasn't it? Let's take a look at the scoreboard. Numskull is currently leading with eight points. Alex Blaze and Encount are in joint second with five points. And Terry Dactyl is currently last with one point. Race three, Alex Blaze comes forward to the front inside lane. This is his time to shine, but he's fighting off some tough competition. Yep, he's got a murderer behind him, an international champion to his right, and an unhinged end count. No pressure, Alex. Looks like we've got a gridlock going on, and oh, it's another crash for Terry and end count, seemingly caused by aggressive blocking tactics from Alex Blaze. Savage. Blaze is holding on to first place, but Numskull is catching up. This could be close. Alex Blaze takes the win. Slow lap time. That gridlock almost stopped the race. It's these heavy cars. They spin out the cars in front if they can't get past. Alex Blaze and Numskull did get lucky being on the front side of the gridlock. They managed to break away. Yeah, great racing from both drivers. I'm pretty damn excited for race four now. Terry and Encount are in trouble with the law. They're not messing around. There's currently a point between Numskull and Alex Blaze, but with Numskull taking the last race in the back row, this could be an opportunity for Alex Blaze to take the lead. That didn't stop Numskull in race one. He pushed straight out into second place. True, Encount still has a chance of taking second place if Alex Blaze doesn't finish the last race. Wow, you're basically inviting Encount to end him. Whatever happens on the track stays on the track. Terry Dactyl is set to lead the tournament, currently with one point. It's the final race. This could be a close one. I hope it's filled with revenge and death. Yeah, I'm actually with you on this one. It's been carnage so far. The reductor is in first place and Encounter has overtaken Alex Blaze. Numskull and Alex Blaze swapping paint at the back. Terry Dactyl is flying round this race. Encounter currently in second place. Terry Dactyl takes first place, setting a new lap record for this tournament. Numskull second. What happened to Encounter? He was right behind. Claimed by another turn. There's no doubt he was quick, but maybe a little too quick for this track. Terry Dactyl absolutely flew round the track in race four. End count held on to second place before losing control in the last corner, overtaken by Numskull. We've got to use that bison to test out the obstacle course on the new track. Great idea. Numskull and Alex Blaze narrowly avoided a pile up with end count there. What an eventful race. Let's check out the final scoreboard. End count is exiting the tournament after coming last in the group with only five points. The Mercedes was fast but couldn't handle all the turns. Chase Family Racing are still in the tournament with another car coming in Group 4. In third place with the fastest lap ever recorded on Corkshire Laguna is Terry Dactyl with six points. Terry is exiting the tournament with his head held high and rooting for his fellow teammate who made it through to Round 2 in Group 1. Alex Blaze from Dog Squad Racing came second with 12 points and will go through to the next round. Well done, Alex. And congratulations to Numskull for coming first with 14 points, going through to round two. Thank you for watching. Welcome back to XR Diecast Racing. I'm Tom, and I'll be filling in for John and Nick today with my co-host Joe. Drop us a comment. Let us know how we did today. What up, racing fans? It's the fourth and final round one group race event. Let's meet our drivers. Driving for Dog Squab Racing, it's Jay Bow in a Corvette C7 weighing 72 grams. Look at this classic, it's Wender Lead representing Spirit of 64. Driving a 75 Chevy Corvette weighing 58 grams. Next up, we have Gravedigger driving a silver BMW for Chase Family Racing weighing 69 grams. Those blue rims are gorgeous. Our last driver is Numskull, driving for Numskull Racing in an SRT Viper GTS weighing 75 grams. Ain't she lovely? Numskull in the purple Viper and Wendelin take the front row. Gravedigger is in the silver BMW next to Jay Bow in the back. Did I miss a tornado? What's going on with that ambulance? You Brits don't get tornadoes, do you? The only tornado is Numskull. Look at him go. Things aren't looking good for Gravedigger. J. Bo has spun him out off the track. Everyone seems to be trying to spin out Chase Family this tournament, don't they? What's this bloody cameraman doing? He can't keep up with Numskull. Numskull takes race one. Wendell leads second. J. Bo is approaching. We could do with another camera in the corner of the screen covering the last corner, couldn't we? Agreed. Over to Ruby in the studio for the race review. Thanks, guys. 
Disappointing start for Chase Family Racing. We seem to have a real problem with the faster cars getting spun out on this track. Numskull made the most of the prime starting position and blasted round the track unchallenged. J Bo could have done better had he not played it dirty spinning out Gravedigger. Thanks, love. Let's say that scoreboard. Gravedigger has some catching up to do after an early DNF caused by pressure from J Bo. J Bo is third with two points. Wendell Ede second with three points, and Numskull first with five points. We've still got three races left. Anything can happen. Give it everything you've got, drivers. Ruby can join you on race two, Tom. It's race two. Gravedigger takes the front inside lane next to Numskull and J-Bo with the beautiful paint job in the back next to Wendell E. Let's have it, boys. Whoa, Numskull has lost control on the first turn, and there goes Gravedigger two. Oh no, the race is over for Wendell E. and Gravedigger. Numskull is miles ahead yet again. The cameraman really is struggling to track this car. Numskull takes the win. What a recovery. Here comes Jay Bo in second place. Over to you in the studio, Joe. Thanks for letting me sit in on this one. What the bloody hell happened there? We've had no end of hell with these heavier cars in the last couple of groups spinning out around this second turn at the Laguna. Honestly, I think we're going to have to reinforce them before the semi-final. Fantastic performance from Numskull. Not the fastest lap time we've seen, but considering he almost lost it at the start, that was a nice recovery. Great work from J-Bo taking second place and avoiding the pile-up. But yeah, very unfortunate end for Gravedigger and Wendell Lee. We're only halfway through. I'm interested to see how Numskull does in the back for the next couple of races. Thanks, Joe. I couldn't agree more with everything you said. I am excited to see how the second half goes. Let's take a look at the scoreboard. Gravedigger has had an unlucky start with two DNFs in last place. Wendell Ede is third with three points. J-Bo is currently second with five points, and Numskull is way ahead with 10 points in first place. A lot can happen in the next couple of races. Nothing is decided yet. Race three. Numskull takes the back in the second half racing next to Wendell Ede again. Will we get to see some overtaking action? I hope so, Tom, I hope so. But hopefully no more DNFs. I'd really like to see everyone finish oh, race J -Bo three. Oh, J-Bo has spun out. An arch! Wendell Ede mounts the side of the track. J-Bo is currently in first place reversing towards the Apple Store. This could be a gridlock situation. Yeah, this ain't looking good, Tom. Looks like j -Bo is managing to escape. Maybe Numskull too. Nope, just j -Bo. This has got to be the slowest lap time on record. Over to you, Ruby. Thanks, Joe. What a finish. We came close to having to rerun the third race, but j -Bo managed to get his car going again and cross the finish line. I think the cars in this group are a similar speed, and the track just isn't wide enough for them to move around in a pack. Our new track will be wider to better cope with this. Well done, j -Bo. Thanks, Ruby. I agree the track width is part of the problem, particularly for these heavier cars which won't budge so easily. Gravedigger is in last place with zero points. Wendell Ede currently third with three points. And j -Bo and Numskull in joint first place with ten points. Good performance so far from these two. Let's go to the final race. This race won't decide much, but let's break that tie. We're actually going to run a time trial race with all of the cars from this tournament. The results could be interesting. I like the sound of that, Tom, and I'd love to see all the cars back on this track. I can't tell you how excited I am for the new track, Joe. It's going to be awesome. Wendell Ede currently first, but Jay Bo is right behind. All four cars are in a pack again. This is a recipe for disaster, but it shows we've really got some top-tier talent in this group. It looks like, oh, no way Gravedigger flew off at the corner. We're going to have to check the footage back in slow-mo that was too close. That was definitely Wendell Ede first, Numskull second but very very close Tom. Close indeed Joe. I can't believe Gravedigger came off the track at the end. My bet is that Chase Family Racing do well in the time trials. Uneventful start to race four. Great drift from Numskull. Risky move with all the other cars around but he maintained nice control of the Viper before slipping past Jay Bo to take second place. Excellent racing from Wendell Ede holding first place throughout fighting off fierce challenges from Numskull who wants to see the final scoreboard. <laughs> Another very fast car from Chase Family Racing. But unfortunately, Gravedigger suffered the same curse and exits the tournament with no points. Wendell Ede from Spirit of 64, good performance, but leaving with eight points. j -Bo takes second place, proceeding to the next round with 12 points as the only driver with no DNFs. Well done, Jay. Taking first place after two race wins with 13 points is Numskull. Excellent performance. That concludes round one. We now move on to round two. Welcome back to XR Diecast Racing. It's the Corkscrew Laguna Season 1 Tournament 2 semifinals. 
I'm Tom, and I'm joined by Joe and Ruby. Thanks, Tommy boy. This is going to be an epic race event. We have both semi-finals groups racing today, and we will be talking to some race fans after the races. So stick around. After four group races in the opening round, we are now down from 16 cars to eight. The two cars from each group with the most points today will secure a place in the final. We've got some top-tier talent from here in the UK and across the world. I think these are going to be some really close races. Yeah, I agree, Joe. Huge congratulations to all the teams for making it this far. Yep, fantastic achievement. Shame Tom's mum, I mean wife, won't let him put a bet on. Shut up, Joe. That's the last time she invites you around for dinner. Here's group one with Dog Squab Racing, Numbskull Racing, Puffs Racing, and Raptors Racing. Jay Bo takes the front inside lane next to Rex. Puff and Numbskull start in the back. Come on, fellas, let's see what you got. We're off. Approaching the first turn, j Bo breaks out of the pack into first. Rex blocks a cheeky overtake attempt from Puff. Oh, Rex almost overtook j Bo from the inside lane. Numbskull is putting the pressure on Puff now. Rex overtakes j Bo. Rex takes first place, j Bo second, Puff third, and Numbskull last. A fairly tame start to the semifinals. Puff tried to push past Rex early on but was blocked and Numbskull spun Puff out towards the end but couldn't get past as Puff drifted sideways down the track. Great overtake from Rex stealing first place from Jay Bo before the last turn. Thanks Ruby, let's go to race two. I'd love to send some Hot Wheels down this track, wouldn't you Tom? Hell yeah. They might actually make it to the end with this track all being downhill. If anyone is wondering what we are talking about, make sure you watch our talk show on the channel. Puff takes first. Numbskull passes Jay Bo taking second. This is more like it, boys. Hell yeah. I'm still mad at you, Joe. You'll get over it. Puff is flying round now with a comfortable lead and no real threat from Numbskull at this point. Oh, Puff drifts into the finish line and takes first place. Tom, mate, that was not a drift. He lost control. Did you see the crash the other side of the finish line? He must have puffed one too many. Yeah, um, too many puffs of his vape. Nice early overtake from Numbskull coming out of the back row and taking second place just after the first turn. Rex stayed hot on the bumper of Jay Bo most of the race, and Jay Bo seemed to struggle to get the pedal down enough to catch up with Numbskull. There's literally a point between each of the players. This is going to be a close group. Let's go to race three. Numbskull and Puff in a front row showdown. Now this is what I've been waiting for. I'm more excited about the two Corvettes racing side by side at the back, although Rex does have the inside lane. Numbskull moves into first. Puff needs to put his foot down or Rex will overtake. Jay Bo is hot on Rex's tail. Numbskull came flying round that corner. Oh my god, Numbskull flew off the track into the mountain. Puff takes first, but the rest was too close to call. Looking at the replay, it seems both cars were completely over the line at the same time. So we will have to call it a second place tie. Let's take a look at what happened to Numbskull. He was going so fast his Viper caught air on the final descent towards the finish line, which is on some uneven terrain. Fortunately, our camera crew were able to keep up today and caught what happened. Thanks, Ruby. Unfortunately, not the first time we have seen fast cars crash around the turns of the Corkscrew Laguna. The drivers today will be desperate for a place in the final. Puff and Rex are currently in the lead with J. Bo just a point behind. That crash has probably cost Numbskull a place in the final with the Viper, but we still have Group 2, so don't be rushing off after the last Group 1 race. It's the final Group 1 race. Can you feel tension in the air? I can indeed, Joe. The pressure will only increase in Group 2 for any teams down to their last car in the tournament. Rex in the pole position is currently in the lead. Puff seems to be playing it safe at the back, knowing that a DNF could still cost him the final. Damn, what a beautiful 450 degree spin from Numbskull. Great recovery. Another race win for Rex, Numbskull takes second, and j Bo third. Fantastic performance from Rex yet again. Interesting tactic from Puff. j Bo was not far behind Rex and Numbskull for most of the race but couldn't quite get the speed to challenge their positions. Let's check out the final scoreboard for Group 1. Remember, don't go anywhere because we have Group 2 coming right up. Numbskull crashes out of the tournament with seven points. We've had some outstanding racing from the Viper. Congratulations, Numbskull. j Bo leaves the tournament with 10 points. Well done, Jay. Great racing this tournament. Numbskull Racing and Dog Squab Racing both still have a car in Group 2. They've used up a life, so the pressure is on. It certainly is. Massive congratulations to Rex and Puff for securing a place in the final. Let's go at Group 2. But first, it's XR Extra.
Welcome to XR Extra, our behind the scenes talk show. If you missed the pilot episode, go check it out. Let's talk to a few race fans before we go to group two. There's a lot of excitement in the stands today. But first we have caller on line one, Karen from London. It is disgusting what your racing league is doing to the environment. We did not ask for this in the UK and it is not welcome. Have a laugh, Karen. Hang on, is this Karen from the audience on the pilot? Anyway, I've got thousands of fans behind me that would disagree with you, love. Jog on. Okay, let's try someone in the audience. You in the red cap? Tom Sotia, Mike. What did you think cap. of the first group race? Great to meet you, Tom. It was awesome, man. It gave me chills. Being here in person is just unbelievable. I was disappointed for Numskull. He deserved to win that third race, but I am sure he will smash it in group two. Thanks, guys. Let's talk about Rex racing for a newish team called Raptors Racing. You could say he was the underdog in this group, but he really smashed it, securing two race wins and coming top of the group. Yeah, I've got high hopes for him in the finals, Ruby. Raptors Racing also pulled off the fastest round one lap in their Baja Bison earlier in the tournament. It's time for our second semi-finals group. Let's go! From left to right, we have Alex Blaze from Dog Squab Racing, Misty G from Puffs Racing, Dusty Miles from Milestone Racing, and Numskull from Numskulls Racing. In race one, Alex Blaze takes the front inside lane next to Dusty Miles, and Numskull takes the back inside lane next to Misty G. I do love that paintwork from Dog Squab Racing. Numskull's not messing about, now he's going in for the overtake already. Alex Blaze currently first, and Numskull has taken second. Let's see if Alex Blaze can hold his position. That might be difficult in reverse. Alex swerves to block Numskull. Alex Blaze takes first, Numskull second, Misty G third, and Dusty Miles last. Alex Blaze, wow. Great job blocking the overtakes. He really fought to hold his leading position. Nice comeback from Numskull with the early overtake from the back. Good start. A late overtake from Misty G to steal third place missed attention. Buzzing for race two. Thanks, Rube. Me too. Let's go race two. Numskull takes the front inside lane next to Alex Blaze. Misty G at the back next to Dusty Miles. I don't know why, but I just started thinking about Pokemon. Um, okay. Maybe because of Misty. Maybe the altitude is getting to me. Numskull is in first, but look at this. We've got a choo-choo train. You've been in the back of Puff's car again, haven't you? Cheeky 180 from Misty. Numskull takes the win. He almost beat Raptor Racing's lap record, but not quite. Tame race. Misty G overtook Alex Blaze to take second place on the second turn, and Numskull held first place throughout. Not a lot of action, but the four cars were less than a second behind each other. One small slip up could have changed everything. Dusty Miles has some catching up to do in last place with three points. Just behind Alex Blaze is Misty G with five points, and Numskull is currently in the lead with a comfortable eight points. Over to race three. It's Misty G's turn for the hot seat racing next to Numskull. Rumor has it our new track will not have an inside lane advantage. A true racing pro doesn't care what position he starts in. That makes no sense. Numskull just fought off a pass attempt from Dusty Miles, but he's not giving up yet. You can really feel the heat in the second Damn. Group. Alex Blaze just barrel rolled off the track. Not good. This is close. Misty takes the win. Let's go check on Alex. Let's hope he hasn't scratched that beautiful paintwork. Never mind that. He could have totaled the whole Apple building. Who builds a fully glass building on a racetrack? There's the action I was waiting for. In a desperate bid to catch up with the pack, Alex Blaze floored it and somersaulted off the track. Incredible. Great race, guys. Glad you're feeling better, Joe. Let's see the scores before the final race. What's with all these Mackie D's camera shots? It's making me hungry. Is this some kind of product placement? It's working, if so. No, sir. There's currently a point between our top two racers, Numskull and Misty G, Alex Blaze and Dusty Miles are several points behind now, and we'll have to really work some magic in the last race to secure a place in the final. As I always say, anything can happen. It's like Mario Kart when you get blue shelled right before the finish line. It's literally nothing like that, Joe. Are you guys up for a game after we finish today? I'm not a kid. Joe, you literally collect toy cars. It's the final race. Right, I want a clean race, boys. No, who am I kidding? I hope it's pure carnage. Hell yeah! I'm rooting for Dusty Miles or Alex Blaze to turn the scoreboard upside down. We'd need a juicy pile up for that. Seems to be less of that since we installed steel beams through the turns after round one. So, uh, Dusty Miles has a nice lead over Numskull. We missed Numskull overtake Misty G. That's a race win for Dusty Miles. Well done, mate. Well done indeed, Dusty Miles. Dusty gained a healthy lead after pedaling off pressure from Misty G. 
Numbskull came flying around the Apple Store turn taking second place, and Alex Blaze's car seemed to be struggling with the acceleration after the race three crash. Let's check out the final scoreboard and see our four finalists together. Dog Squab Racing, you absolutely smashed it getting two cars through to the semi-final. Sadly, this is where we say goodbye after Alex Blaze came last scoring seven points. Thanks for participating. Milestone Racing will also be exiting the tournament with Dusty Miles coming third place in the semi-finals with 10 points. Great effort and thanks for racing at Corkscrew Laguna. Misty G came third scoring 12 points and securing another place in the final for Puffs Racing. Well done. Huge congratulations to Numskull coming first with 14 points. Also securing a place in the final. That means our finalists are Puff, Misty G, Rex and Numskull. Well done guys. Is this thing on? I'm Joe and you're about to watch some insane diecast racing. So stick around. Don't even think for a second about changing the channel. I will trace your IP address. Knock on your door and have a stern debate with you about your viewing decisions. Oops, sorry that music was for the game show after. We're doing this live today and the studio diverted all our funds to the new track. Welcome back to XR Diecast Racing for the Corkscrew Laguna Finals. We started with 16 drivers and we are down to four, but only one driver can take home the trophy today as the first Corkscrew Laguna Modified Car Tournament winner. It has been brutal. We've had crashes, four car pileups and cars literally flying through the air. You can literally see the battle wounds on these vehicles. Can you say literally any more times, Ruby? Shut it, Joe. Numbskull and Puff start in the front and Rex and Misty G take the back. There is everything to race for with the winning team's logo being displayed on a billboard on the new track for the next three tournaments. The runner-up will be displayed for the next tournament only. I'm sure they would have preferred to win 100k or something. Numbskull is first, Puff right behind. Looks like Rex's car has flipped over. Puff two. Numbskull wins the first race scoring a new lap record. Mr. G takes second. This is not a good start for Puff or Rex. Rex lost control around the Apple Store turn and Puff managed to flip on the final turn. I can't imagine how these drivers are going to be feeling right now. No overtaking action just yet. Numbskull held first place throughout with Puff close behind, but we didn't really see any challenges. It looks like Misty G pushed Rex up on the Apple Store turn, causing him to flip. Puff didn't quite catch air on the bumpy road like the Viper did in the semifinals, but he certainly suffered the same fate. Thanks, Ruby. Let's go to race two. Rex and Numbskull take the front. Misty G and Puff in the back. Go on, Rex. Now is your time to shine, my boy. He's gonna have a tough job fighting off double puff behind him. Yeah, that is not a logo you wanna be seeing in your mirror. All four drivers are back in a pack, and Rex has managed to flip it again. What the hell? Things are looking good for Numbskull. He's heading for another race win. Yep, Numbskull takes the win. Puff and Misty G take second and third. What a disappointing final for Rex. He was absolutely killing it in the other rounds. Yeah, it's really not looking good for Rex. I did not see this coming at all, and I doubt Raptors Racing did. This has happened a lot on the first turn with a car coming out of the turn being pushed by a car behind them, causing them to get pushed sideways around the track. Rex was edging out slightly ahead. We have had viewers texting and suggesting the two drivers for Puffs Racing were colluding to finish Rex off. I don't see any evidence to back that claim up. Yeah, what a load of nonsense. Numskull is currently dominating the finals, but he is about to move into the back starting positions in the second half. This could be a very different second half for him, but let's be honest. Two wins is going to be hard for anyone to beat at this point. You know what I'm gonna say. Anything, Anything can, can happen. happen. Hell yeah. The odds of Puff's racing winning were high. The odds of one of them smashing it in the second half have got to be two. I don't really work like that, Ruby. This isn't a roll of the dice or see who picks the short straw. It's all about skill. A garbage team could put three cars in against a champ and they would still lose. Misty G is currently miles ahead and Rex appears to be all over the place again. We interrupt this program to bring you an important announcement. Mate, I've been dying to press that button all day. Joe! Serious announcement though. What you can't see behind the Apple Store is Numbskull just came off the track. With this being the final and all, I thought viewers would want to see it. I'm taking over the controls after this race, Joe. Technically, we aren't live now. This is a few seconds behind. A bit like all the races behind Misty G. This could be the second half that truly turns the scoreboard upside down. Here's Puff. Wow, that was carnage. Well, it wasn't really, but damn, that has really shaken up the scores. Numbskull Racing are gonna be on the edge of their seats for the last race. Misty G absolutely smashed it. 
Huff and Rex were spun out by Numskull trying to overtake at the Apple Store, but this ended the race for Numskull, and the other two managed to regain control of their vehicles. What a race. Thanks, Ruby. What a race indeed. This now leaves Numskull and Misty G in joint first place. Puff five points behind in second, and Rex at the bottom with just three points. Man, this last race is going to be tense. Hold your drinks tight, viewers. Hold your steering wheels tight, drivers. I genuinely have no idea how this is going to end. So many possible outcomes. That's the beauty of it. Yes, sir, it is. Here we go. The last race on Corkscrew Laguna for a while. Puff takes first. Numskull coming in fast behind him. Rex seems to be picking up the pace a bit this race. He's got better control of the vehicle, that's for sure. Needs to step on it, though. Nice control from Numskull over the bump. Puff wins the final race, and Numskull takes second. Whoops. Misty G's car ain't looking too healthy, Tom. Jeez, what on earth happened there? Good job, this is the last race in the tournament. Assuming there's no tie to settle. I bet there's a couple of teams trying to do some math in their heads right now. Puff in the pole position held first throughout the final race after Numskull failed to catch up and overtake. Not a great performance from Misty G and Rex. I really thought we would see more from Misty G given how close Misty is to winning the tournament. That car was totaled at the end. Epic. Thanks, Ruby. Let's see who the winner is. It's Numskull. Congratulations, Numskull Racing. You are the tournament winner. That was close, but huge well done to Misty G of Puffs Racing for coming second and Puff and Rex for making it to the final. What a tournament. Thank you everyone for participating. The Numskull Racing logo will be displayed on the new track for the next three tournaments. And Puffs Racing as the runner-up will see their logo displayed for the first tournament on the new track. Well done, guys. So we completely missed the fact that in the semi-finals, Milestone Racing set a new lap record for the tournament. So our fastest tournament lap was Milestone Racing, Numskull Racing the second fastest, and Raptors Racing the third fastest lap. Well done, guys. Here it is. There's not much difference between our top three laps, but this is a pretty short track. Let's see how these cars do solo on the time trials. We don't have a date in the diary for that yet. Our studio boss is having a baby and overseeing construction of the new track site. How inconsiderate. He needs to get his priorities straight. Racing his life. What the hell, Joe? Anyway, as you can see, we have some special guests joining us on the next XR Extra Diecast racing talk show for exclusive interviews. Gravity Throttle Racing, Rick's Diecast Racing, and the Lord's Racing League. Don't miss it, and make sure you check out the pilot on our channel. Thanks for watching XR Diecast Racing. That concludes Tournament 2. Make sure you subscribe to our channel, like the video, and drop a comment to let us know what you think. See you at the new track. Peace out. Hey, yo, how about you watch another cheeky video? Go on, you know you want to.